Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm super pumped because we're talking about the Tamron wide angle lens for the E-mount system versus the Sigma wide angle that was just released this year. Yes, Tamron's is a little bit older but it stood up pretty good and it's the reason why I went with it. So I'm gonna be talking about in this video why I did purchase the Tamron over the new Sigma. And then at the end of the video I'm gonna be talking about why the Sigma, I have a little bit of fear of missing out or in not buying that lens. So the and will be the reasons why I could have or should have gone with the Sigma 16 to 28. Let's dive in. Oh, and one last thing about the Sunnies. If Peter McKinnon can wear his Pit Vipers in his vlogs, then I thought I'd do the same. Just picked up a new Honda CRV and I'm liking it. 2002, not too bad. It's a nice little new toy for me. This is with the active stabilization turned off, so we have a little bit wider field of view. And this is now with standard stabilization turned on. And this is now with active stabilization turned on, so a little bit more of a crop there. I also attached a Joby Gorilla Pod now, and this is with active stabilization turned off, so don't know how shaky the footage is gonna be, but that does give us even wider field of view, which I'm liking a lot right now. And I'm gonna have to put my ND filter on really soon so I can show you, you know, the background bokeh, get some depth of field going at f2.8. Okay, let's get into reason number one why I chose this lens. The biggest one for me was definitely the price. So it's $300 cheaper uh, in Canada and I think in the US as well uh, for the Tamron over the Sigma lens. And these lenses often do the same thing for people uh, with the exception of the biggest thing in the Sigma being that extra one millimeter of focal length, which is super nice. But seen side by side these lenses pretty much do the same things in terms of autofocus and then sharpness as well and oftentimes it's said even though the Tamron is older that it's going to do a better job from 17 to 28 in sharpness than the Sigma will. All right, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was the vignetting and distortion. On the test that I've seen online, namely by a guy named Dustin Abbott, it seems to me that the Tamron is actually a little bit better in terms of controlling that distortion and vignetting than the Sigma wide angle is. Again, it's super important to note that both these lenses are very marginal in their differences and whichever lens you end up choosing is actually going to do just fine for you. There's not one that's substantially better than the other in terms of my research. So before we get into the reasons why, I just briefly want to talk a little bit about the bokeh. Again, with this, it's actually super similar as well in terms of the bokeh quality for the Sigma and Tamron. But let's do just a little bit of testing here. I'll go down to f2.8, stop all the way down to that, and then we'll just get some cool little nature shots here. And we can see the background separation. Again, this Dustin Abbott says that in his tests, you get kind of like a richer or creamier background blur with the Tamron. Run. Okay guys, so we are almost done here, but be sure to like this video. It goes a really long way in helping my channel more than you know. And let's finish off right now with the reasons why I wish I would have gone with the Sigma wide angle lens for this E-mount system. So reason number one is that extra one millimeter of focal length. I think this 17 is fine, but there are some scenarios, especially like I was shooting real estate the other day that I really would have wished I had that extra one millimeter. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it can be in in certain circumstances. I also think the uh, premium build quality of the Sigma is just a little bit better uh, than the Tamron. The Tamron also has some moving parts internally, um, whereas the Sigma doesn't when you zoom. And then last but not least, uh, this is just a nitpicky one, but an autofocus and manual focus uh, switch is something that I really like on the lens of my Sigma 24 to 70. But unfortunately, I don't get with this Tamron and the wide angle 
Sigma 16 to 28 does have an AF MF switch. So just to summarize a little bit, we did talk about price. So this Tamron is $300 cheaper. Uh, we talked a little bit about a con more consistent zoom range in terms of sharpness uh, that we were getting from the samples that I was researching online. We were talking about a lower distortion and vignetting on this Tamron, which I liked. The lens per performs like really similar in terms of autofocus. So for me, um, they were on par there. Um, the bokeh is something that we talked about. Again, they're super similar and it's not gonna be like a deal breaker for you, but um, um, there are some tests online that says that the Tamron is a little bit better in terms of bokeh. And then now we know the reasons why I wish I would have gone with the Sigma. But at the end of the day, these lenses are so similar that I think it's worth some value in saving that extra $300. So at the end of the day, you really can't go wrong with either. And if you are on a budget, I highly recommend going the Tamron route. A big thank you to all my new subscribers and existing subscribers. I know I haven't been posting a lot lately, but uh, I will be getting back into this and this is my path in the future. Also on the channel, I wanna talk a little bit about my business endeavors, uh, what I'm using my camera for in terms of making money, Money. So that's something as I approach a thousand subscribers, I am going to be getting a little bit more into that stuff. So uh, please hit that sub button, that like button if you found value and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mario.